Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the Kenya. Welcome back to... I, I don't know what this is. I guess maybe this is a tech note. We're going to talk about stuff that a very select few people want to talk about. And that is C rating. Oh, yeah, C rating. You take yourself a typical battery like this. Around the canyon, this is what we run. We run 3S 1500s. Like 90% of the rigs here run this. Jolly Green runs a big Adventure Pack 4300 because he's uh, he is thirsty. And then we have the 4S rigs. And the 4S rigs run these tiny little 4S 1300s. And you'll notice there's a, there's a real... There's a commonality here. So I shoot for a battery about this size. They're very small. They're very light. Uh, it, I don't believe in like 5,000 packs because this you can just drop one in your pocket. You're still going to get like an hour and 45 minutes out of that, whether it's the 3S and the 4S. And in the, in the 3S, uh, we've tried most, if not all of them. The Z, the CNHL, the Huvo, the Awanfi. There, and there there are others. I thought I had some more sitting out on the bench, but uh, these are just the ones I grabbed. So where this is leading is 100C, 120C, if you'll believe that, 100C, 120C. So for those unfamiliar, what a C rating means is that that battery can produce theoretically. Let's, let's not do 120 because that's too much math. Let's do the 100. So it can do 100 times the capacity in burst output in amps. So this being a 1.5 amp battery, theoretically, this battery can produce 150 amps, like in a burst. Now, in something that can draw that kind of power, this is important. If you're running like a Max 6 in your Arma Craton, uh, a speed control that can easily ask for, well, with a motor that can easily ask for 150 amps and a motor that can easily pull 150 amps, then that C rating is important. But is it important to us? Because that connector is called an XT60 which means it is designed, if memory serves, to peak at 60 amps. It's really like a 30 or 40 amp connector, which when you think in terms of amps, that is really high anyway. Like I run XT90s on the others, and there are moments in go fast vehicles with where, where with a 90 amp plug, you can feel a little, a little dip. Now, generally... If something is starved of voltage or amperage, that item will more often than not get hot. Something on either end of the chain is going to get hot. Either the speed control is going to get hot, the motor is going to get hot, or the battery is going to get hot. And that is, that's the one that you want the least, is hot battery. So, uh, because uh, lithium doesn't like being hot. So where are we going with this? This battery claims that it can produce 150 amps, which we can never use because we're never going to get more than 60 piped through that. So, uh, are they just banking on us being like, well, a higher C rating is better. We've got to get that 100 C when we're never going to need it or have the capability to get it. I know a lot of folks don't even run XT60s. They run XT30s. And if you've never seen an XT30 before, it's very small. So that, that C rating doesn't matter. And I, I realize we're, we're, we're bearing this. So why, why is this even the topic of a video? Because brought to uh, me by just random Amazon searching. Customers who viewed this also viewed this. Ovonic Air, which, oh, this is Ovonic FPV. This is Ovonic Air. High discharge. 35C, but it's a 2200, right? 
and why this is relevant to my interests is it's actually smaller than a 1500 in every way. Well, this 1500 is a little shorter, but I think it was the Huvos. Yeah, that one's pretty much the exact same length. It might be three, four millimeters longer. It's a little bit longer than that, maybe seven, eight millimeters longer than that, but like the same exact width, pretty much the same height. So if you have a battery tray holder or container on your vehicle that can with that can hold one of these, it can hold one of these. That's 50% more magic pixies, right? So, well, based 16.65 uh, watt hours, 24.42 watt hours. So it has 50% more juice in it. So you should be able to get 50% more runtime. But you do that math, 2.2 times 35 is 77. So it's half of the rated burst amps of this. So this long intro is coming around to a simple thing. Can I tell the difference? between that and that. 1500, 100C versus 2200, 35C. So what I figured we'll do is we're gonna take two guys along with us and they're just gonna switch back and forth. They're gonna, they're gonna like one guy's gonna start with this one, the other with that one, and we're gonna go to see if we can tell the difference. And I tried to think, who have I got that's the most power hungry that runs 3S, can't be 4S? So I thought we're going to do baseline because baseline is the guy to establish baselines. He is running a Fusion SE, which is rated at a 40 amp speed control. So it should not be a problem. So then the other one we're going to go with will be the power hungry boy, which will be Rusty, who is running a Rhino V80 outrunner speed control with a relatively monstrous flash hobby 3548 900 kv outrunner which if if memory of the spec sheet serves me correctly peak draws around 77 amps i think is what 72 77 it's something like that so it should be at the limit of what this guy states will i be able to tell a difference this is really going from the field category. We will bring old, uh, old Raytech with us, the old, the old laser, as you can tell. These things are not hot. So we've got a baseline. <laughs> we've got two baselines. We've got the gentleman named baseline, and we've got a baseline. And this is more, this is satisfying my own curiosity. And for people out there who have an unknown, maybe this is something that you never knew you needed to know. And if you stick along for the rest of this one, you'll, you'll know it. Because if this makes no difference, well, I would buy the 2200s because it's actually a little shorter. Because I will take more runtime. This thing should go two hours plus on a battery that big. Oh, and by the way, what was the other one? Yeah. Right here, this was $27. That's four plus hours of runtime for 27 bucks and they they're they're plenty light and the cord is unnecessarily long let's uh oh man i just mixed them up one of these is charged and one isn't let's get the rigs ready and i'll uh i'll meet you outside so on the trundle back here i got to thinking how do i test something like this and i guess feel and the pseudoscience of we'll temp gun it and I'm gonna do that, and all of those numbers will be in good old freedom units, uh, the Fahrenheit, because my brain does not operate in Celsius. I, I genuinely, I don't know what the numbers mean. Somebody will say, oh, it's like 17 out right now, and I honestly don't know, is that hot? Is that cold? Like someplace was saying uh, in, in the UK during that heat wave last year, they were saying, oh, uh, people are dying. It's like 35C. And I look it up and that's like 100 degrees. And I was like, well, you know, 100 freedom units. And I was like, there are people that die at 100? Like, like we had a couple days last year, it was 117. 
which again, I have no idea what that is in Celsius. Uh, I do remember an old uh, uh, a joke. It may have been a science teacher. And the joke was uh, Fahrenheit is the temperature measuring of humans. Celsius is the temperature measuring of science. And Kelvin is the temperature measuring of the universe. Or uh, more succinctly put, I think, uh, if it's 100 degrees Fahrenheit, you're uncomfortable. If it's 100 degrees Celsius, you're dead. And if it's 100 degrees Kelvin, we're all dead. It's a fun, it's a fun way to look at it. So everything was uh, like 59 degrees Fahrenheit. This is, oh, I guess, <laughs> I guess I should point out, we're just running it loose and fancy free right now, everybody. I guess I should point out that the Ovonic 2235C is in there right now. And if I had to say I can tell a difference, I cannot. It, it feels exactly, the, precisely the same. I guess... I, I don't know how I'm going to orchestrate it intentionally, but you would want to, I guess, get it bound up. Because freewheeling like this is not going to introduce a lot of heat. Baseline doing what baseline do. Just, just whipping it around. I don't know, you know, I've always kind of wondered Will just leaving something on drag brake like that, will will that affect the temperature? Is it going to cool down or... Because to my knowledge, drag brake is just feeding constant voltage. Yeah, he was definitely in high. So this is a regular 1500 pack. Should feel like it always does. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely... Bellied up. There's definitely the zoot that I'm accustomed to. And with this motor and this speed control, he will, he will lift the front end. I think with this, if there's going to be a way to tell a difference, it's going to be with this guy. Like, if, I, if I'm not being friendly on the trigger, he's got, he's got hops. But, if, you know, same token, maybe too much? Is it too much hops? Based on that, one would say yes. Yeah, see, there's no... There's no technological trickery involved in this. It's just <laughs> juice. It's give it all right now. Oh, you want maximum torque? We have maximum torque. We'll give you that, we'll give you that right now. Ah, too much tomfoolery. So during that flip over, I used a little bit of a laser and the, the, the battery, the speed control and the motor are all within a degree and they are technically cooler than what the thermometer over on the post says. It says it's 59 degrees and I got 56 on the motor, 56 on the speed control and like 54 on the battery, which shouldn't be possible, but so in terms of in terms of feel, I don't know yet. We got we got to flip them around, but in terms of what the heat gun says, yeah. See, with FOC, if it can drive it, it will drive it. So maybe that'll be interesting. This little line here, there's a little bit of slip, and I kind of rely on that holding the trigger at a static position. I can kind of get a little bit of a mental snapshot of is it is it going to make a difference? 
the slow. Will we get the same slow? We should. I mean, that should not be amp demanding much at all. Because if we have a battery that's rated at 16.65 watt hours like this one, and it runs for an hour and 45 minutes on average out of a 1500 pack, that means we're using, oh, I'm trying to do the math. So if it was two hours, that would be eight watts an hour. So it'd be consuming on an, on an average of eight watts, but it's just over that. So probably like nine, nine and a half watts, which is not a lot. That's, that's very low. Uh, again, I'm gonna have to go off of memory serving. Uh, seven, for some reason, the number in my head is popping up 767 watts is one horsepower. So, this this motor typically over time though we're not fully on the throttle all the time but i i would have to guess is between one one hundredth and one fiftieth of a horsepower not producing a ton i don't know what they're rated for in newton meters but rock crawlers are not particularly power hungry at least not in my experience and so long as the control feels exactly the same and baseline feels great on that on that 2200 so i'm not i'm not saying that i'm going to rush out and replace all my 1500s with 2200s trying to trying to do the same sort of low creep here but he's got a little less ground clearance and by a little less i mean a lot of less we'll get him right in here same same type of thing we'll go up. bump on a little slow poke here all right, so that's what I'm looking for. It's kind of that little environment right there that I'm going to attempt to duplicate with both of them. And now I'm, I'm going to take the battery out of that and put it in that. And, and I'm going to see, can I tell the difference between a 1500 and a 2200? 65 C difference in rating. But is it? So with the bodies off, pulled the gun out and temped everything. The hottest individual item we had of the, I guess, six components involved would be the very pinion end of the Fusion SE had reached a lofty 64.5 degrees, about five degrees above ambient. There, there might, I don't, you know, honestly, oh, he's got a little tongue. Uh, Oh, wait. Huh. I almost said there might be something to it, forgetting that I had just put the 2200 in him, which is why the battery strap is hanging out the front, because the battery is actually smaller. No, it feels... If anything... The, the, what might be noticeable here, to me, this this feels more punchy. Now that could be because that CNHL Black that is in there, the 1500, has got more than a couple cycles through. But in terms of C rating, this pack, which is rated at 35C, definitely feels like it has more punch than the one that's rated for 100. Let's just... Let's round it out over here. Try this little right here. Like, I feel like my finger tension actually might be like, how, how do we measure this? In ounce, inches, foot pounds? Like, I have to pull the trigger a tiny bit harder. But the amount of juice that I feel is coming out of it is higher. Slow creep, every bit is good. He's still a little, he's still a little rocket boy. 
I don't, I don't know. This is, what is the word I'm looking for? It's, we're, 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 okay. Now that's interesting. I had some hesitation getting up that line on the 2200. That's interesting. I, anecdotal, by the way, is the word I was looking for. This is definitely anecdotal. This is two batteries and two rigs. At least we've got it isolated down to it's on the same surface. I feel like the low, low, that's so strange. I feel like I have a little bit better feel on the 1500 than I did on the 2200 with this guy. And I, you know what I think that honestly comes down to? I'm not going to say that C rating doesn't mean anything because in a fast rig, it obviously does. I think most of the C ratings, though, are wildly overstated. I think, if nothing else, the 35 C rated 2200 is probably being more real world realistic than these little ones claiming 100. Now, I don't have any sort of equipment to test this other than to. I came in a little more this side, yeah? Uh, other than to hit rock and try it. Like right there? Yeah, this is really weird. It feels softer. Like there's less punch in this bat. And this could be an age thing. I don't really particularly have any very new... I don't think I have a 3S1500 with less than, say, about 15 cycles in it. Now, Ovonic claims these 2200s are good for 350 cycles. I think that's wildly optimistic. I would say that a pack of this size and this caliber and cost, you're probably looking at about 70 cycles before you're going to start to watch diminish. They're going to start to, you're going to get less runtime, less runtime, less runtime, which is why I was so particularly interested in these 2200s because 70 cycles of the 2200 is a hundred and a hundred plus cycles of the 1500. So them being cheaper, you would, it, they would effectively, well, if they were the same price, it would be more cost effective. So are we gaining something by the lower price point of the 2200 because it's just being sold as a 35C and not a 100C, which should theoretically mean better sells. But this is the 2200 in here. I have absolutely no problem with this. That if this were blind, if I just handed this to someone and I said, and you know what? I might try this at some point in the future. We might re revisit this in a Canyon Tech short short of hand, uh, say, hey, let me borrow your rig from it for a second. Swap the battery out, not tell them what we did and see if they can even determine a difference between the two. Honestly, I think this will, I'll make another go fast reference. I, I love my associated SC8. Dot two e. It's over 10 years old. I've been running it on a pair of Value Hobby 6500 2S packs put together in series to make a 4S. And those are 6500s rated at like, I want to say they're like 70C or 80C. I just recently bought a Z 4S 5200. And I want to say it's rated at like 120C. And when I put that thing in there, baby, it was like somebody broke in and put a turbocharger in. Like I had to drive lines different because that thing's running a monster 4076 long can eighth scale motor that is gonna pull 100 plus. So I think the short takeaway of this and where, where I'll land on it for today uh, opinions might change over time. Let's see if we get any rollback at all. 
No, just the settle of the tire. Uh, where I'll land on for today, and we'll call this pseudoscience, this is MythBuster level. This is acceptable. I'm watching how close that, that rear tire, like, see the rear tire is pocketed in. The front tire is just very slightly, it's got the tiniest bit. But I think now that that rear tire is socketed in, I think it's just going to stay right there. And as we've seen, baseline is just parked right here. So I genuinely, I don't think it matters for a rock crawler. I think if you have anything typical, we don't have anything that I'm aware of that's rated above an 80 amp rating. Most speed controls are 40, 60, or 80. Like I say, the Fusion SE is fitted with what they call a 40 amp speed control. But I mean, it has, if you've got enough to pop the nose and spin the wheels, it clearly, it clearly has enough And genuinely, I can tell you from that little cycling back and forth, pop, 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 there's more punch in that 2200, probably because it's new. So it's, it's crispy. That's the, the one that's holding, well, he is, Rusty is, he has slid back. He has inched back glacially. And I mean, he's parked on a 45 degree slope on wood. So he has inched back about quarter of an inch in the amount of time I've been talking about this one. So I would say the new pack has more punch despite the lower C rating because I can really, I can actually modulate this a little better. So I can't, you know, I can't tell you. I can't tell you. Uh, the 1500 over time acts like a softer new 2235C. So I can, I have a little bit more ability to modulate. Yeah, this this launches a little softer. The 100C launches a little softer than the 35. Again, we can't go full apples to apples because I don't have a new 1500 100C. But what we will do is we will uh we'll call it at that. The, it uh, I would give I would give the 20 the Ovonic 2235C. I would give it a asterisk Canyon recommendation. As of right now, they're like 27 bucks for a pair. I think after tax and everything, it was right at $30, like $30.50, something like that. You really can't go wrong. $15 a pack, and the runtime on them should be should be bonkers, right? Like I get an hour 45 out of a 1500. Hour 40 to an hour 45, unless you've got something beefy, you know, Axe, 550, something like that. Maybe go a little bigger, you know. But... You know what? You know what we'll do? I'll pull these off to the side over here real quick. I'll put a gun on it. And then I'll uh, I'll I'll thank you for watching. Let's pull these down here. So I do indeed thank you all for watching. Uh by the way, uh results from the gunning. Basically everybody's stuff is between 63 and 65 degrees. So we're between three and five degrees of ambient. Well, four and six degrees of ambient, I guess. It's around 59. It is, uh, so if nothing else, that, that Ovonic is certainly a serviceable option. It's virtually the exact same size as a 1500 with 50% more capacity. And it does not appear to me that we're giving anything up, then the new 35C punches harder than a somewhat tired 100C. And I can say that, who's got, who's got what? I can't even remember. He's got the, so uh, the, the stuff in Rusty was the tiniest bit warmer, but I think, uh, I think that might've been the drag breaking. It's, We'll call it nominal. There's the the difference is so small that if you're looking for a bit more runtime, I mean, I'm used to three S twenty two hundreds being pretty big. That's why I don't run them. But if we can get a three S twenty two hundred for the exact same size and price as a three S fifteen hundred, and the C rating doesn't matter, we should do that, right? So I think we should do that. 
Thank you for the last time for watching this one. Please do comment below with any questions, comments, or concerns. Like if you like, and consider uh, subscribing. It's free. Consider a channel membership, which is not free, but it allows me to do things like spur of the moment buy batteries, right? Then we do a test on them. So uh, thanks for watching, everybody. The two, uh, the, these two, the two pickup boys. Uh, they thank you for joining. We've got to, uh, we've got to go do, you know, stuff. So we hope to see you in the next one. And we hope that between now and when we do see you in the next one, you do your very best. You have a good one, everybody. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna go, we're gonna go. You should go. I'll, uh, we'll all, we'll, we'll all, we'll, we'll see you next time.